do my vehicle inspection. Right now I'm in Green River, Utah. I have to go down here because there's snow in, in Wyoming. And the driver is coming across saying that it's closed and Elk Mountain was snowing. So, i make sure everything's good. I took uh, 15 south through Salt Lake City. Normally I take 80 all the way across through Wyoming and Nebraska. And I gotta do vehicle inspection, make sure everything's good. And then I went down to uh, 6 and 6 takes you over Soldier Summit. And then I got uh, got on to 70 here. And I want to make sure that everything is fine. Went through a couple mountains. And once I do this vehicle inspection, then I'll take 70 right over the Rocky Mountains. Um, but first, this will take me through uh, right by Moab again. Up there last time, and when it comes down to uh, Grand Junction, that's the border of Colorado and Utah. It's only an hour away. But it's very cold and windy in Wyoming, and been checking everything good. The truck stop, it's Love's. It was Green River, and uh, it's Green River truck stop. Now that got sold out, now it's two Love's. And as you can see, two Love's truck stop. It's pretty funny. Right across the street from each other. But, this is. Really out nowhere land here on I-70. This is very um, busy area. It's about 144 miles away. If you go west to another place, that's Richfield. If not, you take six. They'll take you up to Price. Well, Wellsville, I believe it is, um, is the next closest one on six. But it looks like South Sagebrush here. Very quiet. The moon's out. It looks like a half moon. It's all clear skies here. It's good to take a half an hour break here. It's about uh, four hours from Grand Junction to Denver. So it's an hour to Grand Junction. Looks like this barbed wire got broken off. So it's about five hours away to Denver. Right now at Oak Mountain, there are about 60 to 70 mile an hour winds. They're probably closed right now. So that's my choice. I couldn't go to Yellowstone. It's snowing um, for tomorrow. and. Montana, North Dakota, even South Dakota looks like snow. There's so much wind. So I'm gonna go underneath all that. It's very um, warm. I say it's about 50 degrees outside here. We go up to Salt Lake City, it was in the 40s. It'll be snowing tonight. So I got out of there real quick and shot down here where it's warmer. 
and I'll take 70 all the way across and then once I get into Denver I'll take 76 right up to Big Springs and then I'll see the wind in North Platte and then once I get past North Platte then it should be warm, uh, well, warm enough. I notice it's in the 60s on this side it'd be in the 30s and 40s but the wind is really bad and a lot of snow, all the trucks coming from uh, Wyoming was just full of snow. Many are pretty well trapped there coming into Salt Lake City. Some are just like me, they, they go around, they went around the muddy gap. And uh, Casper snowed in, but they, um, they went around closed roads through muddy gap and got into Rollins and snuck around. I saw a couple guys, uh, especially at uh, the Butter Place. He, he said it, he had to sneak around a little bit, but once I get over the Rockies and get over to um, to uh, Nebraska, then I'll just try to get behind that that uh, wind, and then in the daytime I'll drive through that and get in front of it, and then get over to Des Moines, and then take 35 north right into Minnesota and take 90 right across. Well, it looks like a very quiet night. You see the traffic here. It's pretty busy here on 70. Everybody's taking 70. If they're smart enough, that's the only road that's really open. Uh, so the ones taking 80, they sneak down here. So it's much bu uh, busier. Right now it's uh, 8 o'clock mountain time zone here. Well, it's a good half an hour break. Let me see these cars just getting off here. Well, it's all sagebrush here, it looks like. Still green. Green sagebrush. Could take a break here. Looks like this fence is broken. Looks like something's plastic or snow oh, insulation here. Oh, I wonder what that is. Looks like it's some kind of pipe sticking out of the ground. It's got cement. Might be a, a different pole or something. And this insulation is here too. Let's see what this is about. I just stay along the fence line. Can't go over. It's actually a felony once you jump over fences. But many animals break these kind of fences. And this one's hanging on pretty good. It's all cemented right here. They really put some time here. It's nice and peaceful. Once we get to the Midwest, uh, it's much different. A lot of litter around here. Foot locker. Looks like a foot locker card. Protect this card like cash. Here's the pin number. Ladies' Foot Locker. It gets windy here, you pretty well can see. Looks like this big truck wants to park next to me. Yeah, I can't really drive on the side like he did because I'm 80,000 pounds. I got a whole load of butter. And when he 
you get too close on the shoulder, you, you end up losing it, and all of a sudden it'll roll over. You want to be really careful, you want to stay close to the road. But it's parking here, they have trash cans on the side. Utah has done really well on that. But I'm looking at this here. It's like a little road that goes here. They blocked it off. Huh. Nice to take a little walk here. I was gonna go and stop by the crane there. Oh, looks like the animals will be here. Oh, a small little rodent area. That goes way down there. water and all that is erosion but it looks like a lot of animals would be living here let's see what this is all about yep looks like a gate here this road here takes you somewhere pretty well chained. It's not locked. Yeah. yeah, it's just pretty well clipped. I wonder where this road goes. It is, it is paved. They got rocks on it, I mean. Flashlight off. The road looks much wider. like more trucks pulled up. It's always nice to take a walk. It wakes me up. <laughs> England truck. They're out of Salt Lake City. And the price is over here. This is 404 and 403. This is 404 and 409. <laughs> 395, so that's right on the gas. So credit's 403, cash is 404. That's, that's wrong. Cash is 404 and credit is 409. And 403 is cheaper. I think they made a big mistake here. <laughs> but as you can see over here, it's a brand new station on the left that used to be called Green River Truck Stop. Now it's Love's. That's a brand new place. All these trucks just parked all over. 
signals that come to the new place. I'll stop in here and go to the bathroom and hit the road. But right now in Wyoming, it's probably closed. A lot of snow. In Salt Lake City, it started about midnight to one in the morning, they said. <clears throat> But it looks about the same. They spent about a year and a half remodeling this place. But they changed the parking. They used to come in on the left side. Looks like they're still doing the parking there. But I better take off this camera here turn it back on when I come back out. Alright, turn my camera back up. <clears throat> so it's pretty neat to see the employees still working there. Small world. <clears throat> Where do you go? This is where graveyard ship there. I used to buy fuel there. But I can't buy fuel with loves when it comes to my fuel card. He always wear graveyard shift. He's a really good guy. I known him since, um, well, before he learned English. Now he knows English pretty well. How many years? I'm thinking about 14 years. About 14 or 15 years now. But that's really neat to see that. I came in there and he recognized me as much as I recognized him. Very, very calm and patient man. That's really neat. <laughs> he has a Love's uniform on. <laughs> he used to just wear street clothes. But that's really neat to see that. <clears throat> people still have to work and move on. We think the world's going to come to an end and people are still there. But I had to give him my highway watch card. <laughs> uh, I hope he likes my YouTube site. <laughs> It's really nice to see that when it comes to regulars and when you pop in, he looked at me and, hey! <laughs> oh, it's always nice to see friends like that. And it's work relationship kind of thing. But uh, doing a nice walk like that is really nice. I hope other truckers start doing that. And they have to do their half an hour break and just get out of the truck and walk around. I really appreciate what you have here. Especially when you travel and you tell everybody you went all over the place but you stood behind the wheel. The only places you go is industrial areas, loading docks. And not really to just walk around and see the land. And when it comes to truck driving, it's the most freest job you'll get. It's a big responsibility. You have to be a good meteorologist. And the only boss you really have is a police officer, DOTs. You have to make sure your vehicle is really good. And that way you're showing off when they come and try to look at the problems. And you just give it to them and say, there you go. <laughs> And they do really good work, but I try to be a better DOT guy when it comes to being picky and looking at any problems and fix it and at least get it home. It's a lot cheaper to get it done at the yard and you can MacGyver so much stuff out here as long as you got your bungee cords and hose clamps, duct tape and bring your tools and don't let it be afraid of you when it comes to diesel mechanic it's just bigger but this is pretty neat here this used to be greats <laughs> but a long time ago those are actually livestock greats where 
they keep the, the livestock from coming on the freeway and I used to be on all the ramps in out rural areas and it keeps the deer and elk and others um, to come across but that was just pretty well painted lines I don't think livestock will look at that but maybe it works for them but it used to be great that you go across and they don't like going across there because their hoofs will go right in the middle getting to be a quieter night now. Everybody's getting tired. But it's good to have a power nap. Power naps are really important. If you sleep, say, for 20 minutes, then you're good for another four to five hours. If you sleep after a half an hour, then you're too groggy. And then you have to sleep for about three hours. And then you're good for another eight hours to 10 if you're really into power naps. If not, then you'll end up falling asleep and crashing. And you're not with it and it's not fun when you're yawning and pushing it, then it's just not worth it. You try to be a hero, but not really hauling anything that's they need it real quick there's times and holidays that they want the stuff there before they close and shipping and receiving they push it to get there but we used to do that before but now the laws are too tight now and you have to do everything by the book and it'll just take that once and you'll get hit and then I have a clean record and it's really nice to have that. I worked really hard to have a clean record. You gotta really watch these overpasses when it comes to people sleeping up there. Now let's look carefully and watch your back. If you don't, all of a sudden you'll see something. When you're walking, you always look at shadows. And see, and then you just turn around and size it up, put up your dukes, or be nice and shake a hand. Usually, they're more scared, and everybody takes it wrong because their adrenaline flow kicks in way too fast. But. Once you face them and do eye contact, never look down. And that's your position. And when they charge, you can always move right or left. And it's really nice to make sure you're always uh, on guard, especially if it's animals. You got some dogs that sniff around. Once they get hungry and thirsty, then they're really like wolves and then they'll sniff around and nip at you. But the best thing to do is take a knee and grab a handful of dirt. Sand would be great. If you have nothing in your hand, then have both hands full of dirt. And that's it. If anything happens, even animals, you just throw it right in their eyes. And even big ones, you just throw them in their eyes. And even a, a man coming after you, you just take a knee. And they'll find that very intimidating. And then you come back up with a handful of dirt. You just throw it right in their face, and that's it. And it takes them a while to get all that out, or you'll upset them. So it's all about your next move. And in Marine Corps, you kick them in the knee, and when they fall, you kick them in the head. That's a two second kill. But so far, so good. Uh, I don't have to worry about that. Women, you just kick them between the legs, you know. That's how women do it when it comes to guys. Just try to do your best. All right, well, it's time to go back to Colorado now. And goodbye, Green River.